This first screen shown is going to be our installation screen. And throughout this demo, we're going to walk through the process of installing Kaido, deploying a model with Kaido, and finally testing things out. So that entire process. Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of Open at Microsoft. In today's episode, we are going to talk about Kaito, Kubernetes AI toolchain operator integration with AKS VS Code extension. This operator helps in deploying AI models to your AKS cluster in just a single click. At this point, I'm going to introduce you to one of our engineers, Tejan. Welcome, Tejan. Hey, Sats. Um, thank you, guys. I think the collaboration we've done is really awesome. It's nice to see how we've created an entire end to end experience where users are able to kind of skip all of the difficult steps and kind of get things running, you know, as easily as possible and see a lot of interactive feedback throughout that entire process. So I'm excited to show the work we've been working on. Indeed. And I love it that we kind of shim all the heavy lifting, which needs to be done under the functionality of VS Code extension. So user just needs to follow a simple step. And I'm excited to see how it all works. Do you have any demo? Absolutely. I can go ahead and start showing that right now. So here we are in the Visual Studio code. And as we can see on the left side, we have the extension activated with our clusters available. Um, this first screen shown is going to be our installation screen. And throughout this demo, we're going to walk through the process of installing Kaido, deploying a model with Kaido, and finally testing things out. So that entire process. Um, so in order to pull up this menu right here, you would simply click on one of the clusters in your tree. Let's go down to deploy an LNM with Kaido. And we have the three options here. For now, we would simply click Install Kaido, and we'd be greeted with this screen. Um, here, we simply have an overall overview of the architecture, um, how Kaido works for the user to get information, and also a link to documentation if they decide they want to do something with that. Um, what's great about this integration is that a lot of the heavy lifting is kind of done behind the scenes. So simply by clicking this one button, Install Kaido, um, we're fetching the information for the cluster. We're creating federated credentials. We're creating managed identities. And we're kind of putting together the pieces that allow um, the GPU provisioners and the Kaido workspace pods to successfully work together and enable our future interactions. Um, the process of installation often takes a lot of time, which is also a great thing. Um, the user is able to simply see the process throughout the entire part, they'll be notified of the initial installation stage. They'll be notified when the federal federated credentials are being created. And of course, if anything goes wrong, we'll also notify them of potential errors um, and display that to the user as well. Um, for the sake of the demo purposes, since installation does take a while, we're going to look at a cluster where Kaido has been successfully installed. So here we can see when Kaido is successfully installed, it says Kaido is installed. You can now create a workspace. And we're going to simply go and click Generate Workspace. You can also create a workspace for a cluster that has Kaido already installed by simply going to the same menu, deploy the model, and then create Kaido Workspace, which would bring us to the same page. Um, and on this page, we are greeted with a list of all the currently supported models in Kaido. Um, and at the end, I'll show references to where you can find this information, including the current and new models that are being released. Um, so we can browse these models and we're able to see the GPU size necessary, the compatible versions of Kaido, and the sources if the user ever wants to dig a little deeper. Um, we're going to look at, for this demonstration, we're going to look at a Phi2 model. We're going to go through the process of deploying this, testing it out, seeing what the CRDs are, etc. Um, so as you can see, with any model we select, we're brought up with a little side panel that shows kind of general information about what the user should do next. And we have the option of deploying the model, or if the user actually wants to, they can customize their own CRD and take things into their own hands. Um, so for example, if we click Customize Workspace CRD, we are brought into a new page where we have the YAML file pre-populated with the necessary fields for every single model. So depending on the model that the user selects, we'll add the required um, settings. Um, the user can modify this, save this, and then if they decide to, go ahead and try to deploy a model themselves. And what I really like about this is that from the user's end user's perspective, they can concentrate on their flow, workflow, rather than the nitty-gritty details in order to get actually the model up. So 
this kind of make them much more focused towards their user scenarios. It makes life quite simple. Exactly. Exactly. And it's also awesome to see everything kind of consolidated in one place. Um, all the available models, um, the information needed for the models, and little tips and tricks are kind of all presented to the user at once, so they don't necessarily have to do the research to figure out every single step. Um, so once the user is ready, they would simply click Deploy Default Workspace CRD. And what this does, um, like we said, the user has the ability to create a customized YAML file where they can put in their own specifications. But if they kind of just want to get something up and running with the simplest capabilities, we have the default options available already. So simply by clicking this button, we can kind of see the behind the scenes processes are going of um, verifying if the provisioners are working, verifying if the workspaces are up and available, um, doing all the necessary health checks preemptively. Um, and once the deployment started, we can see we have a constant running log of the, the um, processes. So we can see if the resource is ready, if the inference server is ready, if the workspace is ready, how long the deployment's been going, what GPUs are being used, and the name, et cetera. So it's really nice to be able to sit here and watch the process. And if you do have a cluster where, say, for example, multiple models are deployed, you can actually go to the Manage Workspaces page, which is what I'll show next. So if we simply click the cluster we're working on, and we go to deploy an LNM with Kaito and click Manage Kaito Models. Then we're brought onto the Manage page. Um, and as with every menu, we do preemptive checks to make sure things are healthily running, and then we can start performing operations. So as we can see here, similar um, similar deployment status as these, the previous page. But if you do have multiple clusters, you'll be able to scroll through and see all your models that are currently being deployed. Um, and on this page, as you can see, we got the Phi 2 model that we were just deploying. We can see it's in a minute into deployment. Nothing has started being ready yet, but as, as we know, the user can track this throughout the entire process. And what's also interesting is that the user can easily get the logs whenever to see you know, what stage the deployment is in, if anything is going wrong, potentially. Um, simply by clicking get logs, we're greeted with a log page that has the most 500 recent lines of logs for the user to kind of keep track of things, which they can, of course, save, investigate for further usage. Nice. And great thing about this experience is it's integrated to an extent that users don't have to leave their you know, IDE experience. As an engineer, I would like to stay within my coding environment and rather have everything baked in. And I really like that if I'm working on a sample project or my POC project, all I can do is deploy my AI model within my IDE and staying in VS Code experience. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, Brad, how do you test post the deployment of these AI models? I'll show that right now. So for the sake of the demo, we also have a cluster where Phi2 was successfully deployed. So we'll go ahead and do what we did again, manage Kaido models, but this time on a different cluster. And we should now see, once things are loaded up, it's performing the pre-checks. Um, we'll now see, we have a workspace with a successful deployment. Um, yeah. If your deployment ever attempts to deploy and things don't go correct after a certain amount of time or these certain standards aren't met, you'll be notified that deployment's unsuccessful and you'll have the option to either redeploy, completely delete it, or investigate the logs as well still. Um, so now once you have a successful deployment, we have a new test button, which we can simply click and it'll bring us to a page dedicated to that specific model within the cluster. So now we have the testing page here, which is where we can run simple um, queries to try to see if the inference server is up and ready, if the model is working the way we want it to work. We also have the ability to change a lot of the different parameters for the temperature, repetition penalty, top P, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this gives the user like a very easy way to kind of see if things are up and running because behind the scenes, in order to be able to interact with the inference server, the user might have to either do some port forwarding or create a curl pod on the cluster itself. But with this, we kind of take care of all of that, the creation and the cleanup process at the same time, allowing users to kind of simply just see if things are working, you know, with a simple query. And one example we could use since we're in Visual Studio Code, what is Visual Studio Code? What I really like is this unique experience 
which is not borrowed from anywhere else. And it's all integrated within the AKS extension. That kind of gives the whole power of not only deploying, creating workspace, managing, but also in the end, testing the resources. It's quite beautiful and all together. It is beautiful, absolutely. And as we can see, we went through the process of installing things, deploying things, managing things, looking at logs, um, looking at the progress, um, and being able to test the inference server as well, simply by just doing a couple of clicks. The real work we had to do was click install Kaido, click deploy, and everything behind the scenes kind of just easily came together. So it's really awesome to see the start to end process. And as we can see, we asked the question and we got the output. Visual Studio Code is a free and open source integrated development environment for Microsoft Windows. Um, so that'll be the end of the end-to-end -end process. You know, as we can see, it's very simplified and being able to take care of a lot of the tedious tasks and allow users to interact with a project such as Kaido without having to know too many prerequisites is awesome for allowing people to kind of get things up and running and become more interested in these sort of projects and endeavors. Yeah, I can see DevOps engineers can have so much fun just by not leaving their ID and staying in one extension and just resolving end-to-end, -end, taking end-to-end -end benefit of this Kaito uh, workflow model if they want to use AI model using Kaito in their AKS cluster. Uh, do you have any resources to be shared where a user can go and read more about it? Yes, I do. I do. So... Here we have the GitHub repository for AKS tools. Um, the AKS extension that we've utilized in Visual Studio Code is open source and on our repository. Um, anyone's open to open issues, if there's potentially new issues they want to request, um, new features they want to request. And additionally, here is the link for the Kaido GitHub repository. Um, if you're interested in learning about Kaido in general, um, potentially not even just a Visual Studio Code experience, but in general, there's a repository for it as well. That's awesome. And at that point, I would encourage users if they have any feature requirements or any conversation they would like to start, they can please reach out via our VS Code extension repository. It's open source and people can open issues or feature requests there as well. And we are fairly active there. Thank you so much, Tijan. That was really amazing. And I'm looking forward for more feedbacks, experience share, or anything else. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much, Sats. This was amazing.